9 to 5 is partially funded by Alborello Luxury Hand Soap, an unscented must-have accessory for anyone who loves wine, cooking, and food. For more information, visit alborellosoap.com. It's not 5 o'clock, and they don't care. Welcome to Wine to 5, entertainment, education, and everyday drinking for everyday people. Your hosts are Valerie Caruso and Stephanie Davis, two wine educators who don't need a clock to know when to pour that next glass. Welcome back to another episode of Wine 25. Yes, everybody, it's our first show of the new year. It's January, and hey, snow was not in the forecast. Oh, well, I think I was gearing up for it, but I did have quite a lot scheduled for today and when, yeah, woke up with lots of snow and my intentions of shipping the Wine 25 Govino glasses started to look really um, less appealing because of the snow-covered roads today, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I pretty much just cancel, you know, any commitments where I'm supposed to get on the slippery roads. So um, I had a, a fitness test that I was supposed to do today, too, at the gym. I'm like, I'm canceling. We'll reschedule. <laughs> but no, so I sweet-talked my Justin into shipping all of the uh, Patreon swag. Yeah. Yeah, so on his way to work, he went to the post office for me. What a guy. You know? Thank you, Justin. That is so sweet. I know. He knows how much we love our Patreons, so he wants to help. Oh, I'm so glad. And I'm so glad that we have Patreons to ship glasses to on this <laughs> snowy January day. But moving on, yeah. what are we talking about today? Should we get to what's in our glasses first? Yes, let's talk about what's in our glasses. Well, what's in yours? I want to hear about yours. Oh. Okay. You've got something cool here. Well, I'm drinking a Christmas present from my mother-in-law today. It is the 2014 Ascension Malbec, and that's from Salta, Argentina. And it came in a mixed case of 18 bottles that she bought for us as our Christmas gift from the National Geographic Wines of the World. Otherwise, I think it's known as Nat Geo Wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm not, I wasn't familiar with the wine club, but now it's on our radar, thanks to Justin's mom. And two nights ago, we opened a red blend from Portugal, and last night we opened this Malbec. Uh, it was pretty tightly closed last night, so lots of air is helping it. It's pretty intense. Like, it's that tolerant vino type of wine. Okay. Even though Malbec is really friendly for a lot of people, this is really tannic. Heavily oak, has like espresso, dark chocolate, mm. very manly. In my opinion, you know, requires some good steak or bison or something, you know. So, but it's fun. We're kind of experimenting with this. And yeah, what are you drinking? I've got a Burgundy, and I remember when we talked about Burgundy a little while back, talking about how difficult it was to find great bargains, right. and this is one of them. This is a Domaine Jaeger Defects, and it is a Rui, and I'm assuming I'm pronouncing Defects right, because I'm thinking of Aix in Provence, so it's D-E-F-A-I-X. It is a Premier Cru. Nice. It is the Clos de Chapitre from Rui, 2013, 33 bucks. Nice find. How's it drinking? Right? It's drinking really well. Like as soon as you pull the cork, did not need any decanting, did not need any aeration. It was, it was still in the old world as far as you can still get the herbs and the spice on there. Yeah. But I mean, raspberries jumping out of the glass right away. I'm down. Cool. So approachable. So easy to drink. Really, really happy with this. And didn't even realize I had one in my fridge the whole time. <laughs> and so I was up at the I was up at the wine cellar as I was visiting my my man Dirk up in Monument and he was pouring some champagne on New Year's Eve and I was helping him with that. So I picked up a few more bottles of bubbly and I saw this. I'm like, how's this drinking? He goes, Yeah, it's pretty good. So I grab a bottle and for, totally forgot I've had a bottle in my chiller the whole time, the same bottle. Totally forgot I even bought it. Oh, so you really have two bottles. So we got two bottles. So I said, well, heck, let's open one. And it is delicious. So for a Premier Cru, Rui, which, you know, we talked about it being a good bargain. Yeah. This is delightful. I'll post a picture. Let me see it. Put it up to the video. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. I'll look for that. Yeah. And I, I like the marketing on this one because on the back it says 100% from Pinot Noir grapes. There you so go. So if somebody's looking at this bottle and they're going... I don't know. There's nothing on the front that says Burgundy. It says Domaine Jaeger Defects 2013 Premier Cru Rui Chapitre. 
Most people would look at that and not know what that means. Mm -hmm. But you flip it around to the back and it says 100% for Pinot Noir grapes. And I think that makes it easier for people who aren't into the whole named places, the ladies of the world (laughs) and the clothes and all that. They know, hey, it's Pinot Noir. Check, check. French. That's true. You know? Yeah. That's yep. cool. Nice. Delish. Nice find. Well, yes. so let's move on to the uh, main topic. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Oh, I love it. Sorry. I love it when I catch Val drinking. Which is a lot. <laughs> uh, we've got some happy new year announcements. I feel like we should have little noisemakers, you Whee! know, and little, woo, you know, and all this. Yes, we do. We, we are pulling... Out some winners. This is the first thing we're going to do. First order of business. We're not going to make everybody wait. That's, that's good. All right. I'm so not patient. First thing. Okay. So <laughs> we want to do the Patreon. Patreon yeah. contest first. Okay. So I've upgraded. I got the brown paper bag here for the next contest, but this one I've upgraded to a spit bucket. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So our out of the spit bucket comes our Patreon contest winner. And for anybody who hasn't heard about this contest before. This is for a copy of the Uncorking the Caucasus book, Wines from Turkey, Armenia, and Georgia by Matthew Horky and Sharin Tan. And they are the duo of exotic wine travel. And we are excited to give our Patreons a chance to win a copy. Yep, they donated this copy for you guys, so uh, we hope you enjoy it. Let's pull a winner out. I've got everybody on a little strip of paper in my spit bucket, (laughs) and I got a winner. It's it's okay. It's clean. Actually, it's more of an ice bucket, but, you know, I've used it for a spit bucket, so. Who is it? Oh, that's, it's Jeff Eccles. Nice. That's so perfect because Jeff is one of our devoted Patreons. And it's really funny because we put one of these in here for every dollar amount that you pledge for all of January, or I'm sorry, all of November and December. And he's at the $10 level. So he got like 20 entries in here. Yeah. He's going to love this book. Jeff, get this book over to you. And congratulations. Congratulations, Jeff Eccles. Yeah. And we do have a new drawing for our Patreon supporters. That's going to be starting now. Mm-hmm. And it's a, a monthly winner of a bottle of Albarello Luxury Hand Soap. And it's all Patreon supporters at the $2 a month tastemaker level or higher. So go to our Patreon page for all of the details. Yep. So we'll do one of these every single month then. Yep. So I might as well just keep a spit bucket in my office. And here we go. Yeah. And we do have another drawing right now, Val. We have the hashtag W25 challenge winner to pull out. Oh, we're going to do that one next. Okay. Hang on. Let's put spit yeah. bucket down. Paper bag up. Brown here paper bag. Brown Sexy paper brown paper bag. bag. So I went through all the social media accounts this morning to make sure I got them all. And... I got a winner here. It's folded up and it is stuck together. Okay. (laughs) This is Side Hustle Wino from a 30 October post on Facebook. Cool. Wow. Side Hustle Wino. I think Side Hustle Wino is in Atlanta. If you're listening, you are going to be our last... 2016 hashtag wine25 challenge guest on our show because we got some new stuff going on in the new year. So that is really cool. I cannot wait to talk with her. So I know. And we will reach out to you and coordinate a date where where we can interview you and you well you really get to help us create a whole show so it's so fun yep pick the topic and uh you want to pull the other winner of the soap oh yeah let's do that yeah, shall we we'll pull the first of 12 2017 okay. patreon giveaways so yeah. i'm gonna pull out of my spit bucket one more time john govind Woo-hoo! Out in California. So John Govin wins the Alberto Luxury Hand Soap for Wine Enthusiast Experience the Wine, not the Soap. Nice. John, we'll get that shipped out to you. Thank you for your support. Oh, my gosh. And we look forward to seeing you this year. So that'll be fun. So, like, I worked really hard putting all these strips in this bucket, and I just want to keep pulling names. 
I just want to like give you no, guys like, stuff. Remember when we did the op- the favorite things episode? Yeah. And you're like, and you, and you, and you get a go vino, and, and you, you get a go vino, and you everybody gets a go vino. I wish I could do that. Yeah. Oh. Well, we're gonna have new fun things, and every month we're gonna have a name to draw for the Patreon yep. winner. So that's gonna be great. Well, tell us, tell our listeners about our new hashtag. Oh my now. gosh! So oh, new year, new hashtag. That's what we say around here, and our new hashtag. For for 2017, as soon as I scroll through the show notes because I'm fidgeting in my chair, thanks to three cups of coffee today. <laughs> Those of you that want to participate in the show, you still can. We have for 2017 our new hashtag. It's called hashtag wine oops. Oops. Capital W I N E, capital oops. So, what is that? Maybe a picture of something, I don't know, the other day when I knocked over a glass of very deep red LaGrange and it exploded all over my countertop, wall, refrigerator, stove, floor. It looked like a murder scene. That would have been a great wine oops, but I was too pissed off to stop and take my picture. Oh, shoot. But that's what that would have been. It looked like I did. I've never seen a wine glass explode like that with wine in it. And just, it, yeah. it got in my drawers, in my cabinets, across the room, splattered the wall, the door. The, that that would be wine oops. That is a wine oops for sure. Yeah, yeah. So you could put that picture on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even Pinterest. I think they do hashtags on yeah. Pinterest, right? Yep. Obviously, I don't spend a lot of time there, but you could do that. And then we'll find them all, we'll feature them, or we'll feature them as we get them, depending on how many we get. So we want to see your wine oops, or you can tell us about it on SpeakPipe. Yeah, I think it's a great way to include listeners with our embarrassing wine stories and all of those funny tales that our guests have been, like, it's like their own little confessions. Right. And now our listeners have a chance to confess and share their oopses or their humiliating stories, whatever they may be, whether it's picture worthy or not, you can still tell us your story on SpeakPipe or send us a message or whatever you want. But it's fun to use the hashtag to be able to uh, have it all in one place. Yeah. And you can see everybody else's too. Yeah. Yeah. So if I were doing SpeakPipe, I'd go to our website. I'd click on share on SpeakPipe. I'd leave 90 seconds. I'm like, hey, this is Val. Oh my God. I have a wine oops for you. Yeah. That kind of thing. So you can do that. And we still want to see your hashtag W25 challenge pictures because we do still encourage you guys to continue to taste new things through the new year. And we will continue to feature those as well. Oh, yeah. I still do it because I think it's fun. So. Yep. Cool. And we also have a promotion. We do. We have a promotion. And you can go to the episode 87 show notes to see more. But Bright Cellars, if you've heard about it, it's a monthly wine club. In fact, we have our shipment. It was created by two MIT grads with the passion for wine. They will be joining us on the show this month and in honor of this upcoming episode, they are offering our listeners 50% off their first shipment of wines, which are chosen for you guys based on how you answer a few quick questions. And I think we talked about the algorithm, how we believe it works. And of course, the founder, CEO, Richard Yao, and their director of operations, Christy Lowe, will be joining us on the show this month. So you can learn about it then, mm-hmm. or you can just go claim your deal right now. Go to brightsellers.com slash wine, T-W-O-F-I-V-E. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't get enough wine for Christmas and Santa wasn't good to you, just go to brightsellers.com forward slash wine two five and start getting wine delivered to your door on a regular basis <laughs> yeah why not i mean why don't you lay a factoid on us sister all right here it comes you might see the grape named Darif on a wine label i just did actually and well did you know it's a synonym for petite syrah you see it most often, right? Petite Syrahs out of California, but you can also find it in Australia. And that's, you know, where I saw it on a Southeast Australia blend with Shiraz. And a lot of times Petite Syrah is blended in California with Zinfandel. But Petite Syrah is known for its strength in tannin and color. It's a cross between Syrah and Pellerson and is originally from France. You know, you can find like pretty good value bottles of Petite Syrah, you know, Bogle, you know, some really nice bottles that are under $20. But do yourself a a favor. I mean, I believe that, you know, giving some of these wines some air, even like the one I'm having today, 
helps coax out some of their nuances, you know, try and get to that black pepper and plum and, and the dark berries and all of those cool, you know, Petite Syrah has even some, you know, smoky Mm -hmm. flavors, meaty flavors. So that's my recommendation. And the other thing that Val and I found was a Petite Syrah advocacy organization called P.S as in Petite Syrah, psiloveyou.org. So we have a linky link for that too. That's really funny that you mentioned that because when I used to spend extended time in Europe, when I came back to the States, and and I love old world wine. I mean, I almost drink it exclusively. But when I came back from a year of drinking a lot of Chianti, a lot of Tuscan wine, the first thing I wanted was like this gloppy $8 a bottle blueberry scented glass staining teeth staining tongue staining petit syrah it's crazy every once in a while i just get a a hankering for that and blueberries is the one thing that i always really pull out of it in fact jeff and i talked about that in the video that i did with him the tasting video that we did together yeah that's right i should find that and upload it to our youtube channel i don't know where it went but i'll have to find that i think it is maybe on our youtube channel did we get it on there okay cool well it's on our pinterest okay good good See, obviously, I spend a lot of time on Pinterest, so, uh, yeah. (laughs) That's cool. Well, what's on your radar, Val? Why no radar is this guy. And when I say this guy, I'm talking about Jack Maxwell. He's at Southie Jack on Twitter, and I've been watching his show when it comes on the Travel Channel, and it comes on in spurts, different seasons. So it'll come on for a couple episodes, and it'll disappear for a while, and it'll come on for a couple episodes. Because I believe it takes a lot to produce these shows. So what he does is he travels around the world and puts, you know, interesting things in his mouth, and then he washes them down with even more interesting things. So if you can imagine some of the things he's had, like last week, he was on uh, KLG and Hoda on the Today Show, and he had some of that there antler vodka, and we had just watched a Siberia episode. So he was on a train going through different towns in Siberia, and he was looking for that amazing drink experience. And so this is a funny episode, and I believe you can watch it on the Travel Channel. You can watch it on his website. What? What is antler vodka? Is it, is it made with antlers or something? Yes, it is. With wow. deer antlers. And there's a whole thing where he has to take like an antler bath and he drinks antler oh blood and all this. So, you know, he's got some really strange experiences. It's very similar to, I don't know if any of you guys remember the Thirsty Traveler back in about 10 years ago with Kevin Brotch. And you see him now, I think he's still on Iron Chef. He's usually on the floor reporting, but he had a show called The Thirsty Traveler. So... This is a really fun show, and we'll link it up for you guys. But if you have the Travel Channel, you can definitely check it out. He really takes some of these drinks, and it's just like, when you think it'd be a fun job, but when you look at some of the things he eats and drinks, I'm like, oh, hell no. Uh Uh-uh. I know. I mean, I would love to travel and explore, you know, really great drinks and places, but I am not. No, no, I'm still, you know what I'm still waiting for? I haven't seen him have the smoked whale testicle <laughs> beer yet. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> but I did see a rabbit testicle stew uh, situation oh. on his website. I tweeted that out to the We Like Drinking guys today. So I figured maybe they could pair oh, that. Oh, that's Yes, good. yes. And so what really got my attention, though, as I'm going on and on, Steph, is we were watching the Ireland episode last night. We're kind of emptying our DVR. And guess what was on it? What? Potsheen. Potsheen. Oh, wait, that's what I was talking about, the moonshine. Irish moonshine. He showed up, and that's what they were drinking, and they were doing some road bowling, and, and you know, I'm oh like, John, you won't believe it. We just talked about this on our episode, and he's just like, yeah. where the hell would you get something like that? You know, he didn't say that, but you could, you could just <laughs> probably think, of how, how did this get on your radar? So I really like this show. I love me some Southie Jack. I think he's a lot of fun. He's a Bostonian, so that's what a Southie comes from. It's a part of Boston. He's a bartender by trade. And there are some cocktails and concoctions on this show. I think it makes the hashtag W25Challenge look like child's play. But. Sounds if like you guys it. have had any of these really strange drinks or cocktails, definitely hashtag W25challenge. Let us know. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. And let us know about your pot sheen. I mean, I really didn't know how to pronounce that when I was talking about it in the factoid back in episode 88. I, I 
looked it up how to pronounce it, but there was multiple ways to say it. And I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be well, saying. Well, you know, here. we don't speak Irish. And when they say, uh, you see S L A I N T E, we always think it says like slante. It's, it's slancha. Yeah. You have to know the dialects, and we don't. We don't. So, you know, that's yeah. what they were saying on the show. And it was really funny because this other gentleman was talking to him, and he goes, I don't even know what the. F you're saying to me. You know, it's just such... The dude is funny. I really love me some Southie yeah. Jack. So if you guys check him out on Twitter, check out his show, and check out some of the strange things he's drinking on the Booze Traveler. Cool. Well, I do have something that's funny to say about strange things. I put a strange thing in Justin's stock, Christmas stocking. Oh. I found salt and vinegar crickets, and I put them in his stocking, and he had the funniest look on his face. But I told him, I'm like... Oh, that's for you to take on your ski trips and get your friends to try these strange crickets. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, they would think that's cool. Well, they had ant butts on Kathy Lee and Hoda. Did with they? With Jack Maxwell. Yeah, he had these little, they were ant butts. And it was a cocktail with little ant butts in it. And I'm like, really? Oh. Yeah. If you yeah. can, I'll see if I can find that clip with Jack that's Maxwell cute. and Kathy Lee and Hoda. But it was hilarious. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's some good stuff. But yeah, I like I like the crickets though. You've had crickets? No, grasshopper. No, grasshopper. Yeah. yeah. Well, on my radar and intimate list now, now that it's touched my lips, Ooh. is the Gloria Ferrer Carneros Cuvée. And we opened the 2004 Vintage on New Year's Eve with our friends and our very gracious hosts, Chris and Janet Adams. The bottle was a Christmas gift from one of Justin's clients, and what a sexy black bottle that is. And it's so memorable, you know, just because of the mm-hmm. bottle. It's it's like really like cool and People are like, what is that? It's mysterious. So this is the flagship Tete de Cuvée sparkling wine from Gloria Ferrer. And, you know, it was right old. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, this is 2016. I'm drinking a 2004, but it was still really fresh. Had uh, a nice creaminess about it. Lots of spices and thought-provoking. I mean, everybody was trying to geek out and, and get into the wine, even though we had a, a fun movie and good company going on. And I just really think it's worth seeking out because of the price yeah. for a tete de cuvee. Now, online, the prices were sort of all over the board, but you should be able to find a bottle for $50. And I think it just makes a very beautiful gift. And the bottle makes a statement. So um, not just in the way it looks, but also in the way it drinks. Wow. And, and to be able to get a vintage for that price, I have right. a 2007 vintage champagne that I bought for New Year's Eve, and it was almost twice that. Right. So, yeah, for sure. yeah you're not going to find a vintage champagne for that price, but it's made the same exact way. Yeah. So you're going to get the same drinking experience pretty much. Exactly. I love it. I love the price on that. That's really great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Shout outs, shall we? Let's do shout outs. All right. Over the holidays, I actually have subscribed to Wine Tutor TV. And what that is, is you, you've got to register, but it's free. But okay. even though it was, cre- it was created mostly for Master of Wine students. So these videos are, I'm all about watching a video on the elliptical or something, you know, just to kind of reinforce what I've learned by reading and ingesting content whether you're listening to podcasts or whatever but they do these videos to kind of help master and wine students study for different papers and exams and things well over the holidays tim wildman who's a master of wine sent out these videos and this one was kind of a little treat it was called the rioja scrolls and i'm gonna tell you what from the beginning i had to click on it well we will link up the youtube video and it's pretty hilarious and you may recognize some of the wines because we've talked about them on the show yeah. like the chocolate or the Chacolina, and the grape, the Honda Rabi Zuri, which we talked about on the show. But the one-liners in the beginning, it starts out like a okay. detective show. And then he said, yeah, I drink. I'm the kind of guy that goes out for a beer and wakes up in Singapore with a full beard. <laughs> you know? Random. Kind of thing. You know what? And then you have these adorable, uh, these dudes, they're adorable. One's wearing a Budweiser t-shirt and flip-flops, or, or not flip, like Echo sandals or Tiva sandals. And they're just, first yeah. of all, they're all cute. And they are, one's, one's a recovering psalm, the other two are masters of wine, and they're on this, like, mystery yeah. adventure, you know, trying to find them. It is just cute. And so... It sounds like it's easy on the eyes, too. It really is. I was just like, well, I can, I can watch this. Yeah, this is all right. So, you know, again, tell me uh, learning about wine isn't a hoot, 
But if you're interested in following these guys, we'll put their Twitter handles up. There's Donald Edwards, Justin Knock, Master of Wine, Tim Wildman, Master of Wine, and Johnny Minlin. So definitely check out the Rioja Scrolls because it is funny. And I just love that people are taking a multimedia approach to learning about wine, even at the Master of Wine level. So it's not not so stuffy as people might think it would be. So I I was excited to get that for Christmas. That's cool. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm definitely going to check it out. And thanks for putting it on our radars. Yep. Well, I think uh, that's the end of the show. So we should uh, give some shout outs to our Patreons. And gosh, some of them are our winners, right? Because we did a drawing today. So Jeff E is our winner of the Uncorking the Caucasus book. So that's exciting. And he is a tenacious taster from the We Like Drinking podcast. And it's our It's Not 5 O'Clock and We Don't Care listeners. Thank you so much. Meg from South Dakota. Clay from Arizona. John, who won our bottle of Alvarela soap. He's out there in California. Andrew in Illinois. Michelle in Nevada. And Aswani in California. We thank you all so much for being a vital part of our Wine 2 Five community, guys. Thank you so much. And if you love the Wine to Five, and we know you do, then you'll share our show with your friends, your online community, and we certainly appreciate all your involvement and feedback. Leave us a burning wine question or a comment on SpeakPipe. Tell us your wine oops story. iTunes love is always appreciated in the form of a glowing iTunes review as well. And for your listening pleasure, whether iOS or Android, we are also on iHeartRadio. Come play with us on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, Google+, or... You can build your collection of wine books and accessories at our online store, also located on our website. Steph, where can we find you on social media? I am on Twitter and Facebook at Albarello Soap. And I'm on YouTube and I'm on Instagram and Pinterest as the wine heroine. And where can we find you, Val? I'm on the Twitter. <laughs> Tweet. <laughs> I'm on the Twitter. I think that's where I am the most. I'm on the Twitter as Wine Gal Unboxed, U-N-B-O-X-E-D, and on the Vino with Val Facebook page and on Instagram as Vino with Val as well. So we wish you guys a happy new year, happy January, and bring on the wine oops. Bring on the wine oops. <laughs> and until next week, everybody, cheers. cheers. Thank you for listening to the Wine to Five podcast. Be sure to check us out at Facebook slash Wine TWO 5 and tune in next week for more fun and useful SIP tips.